let's concentrate on what's Graves disease. What really happens in Graves disease that this is an autoimmune disease which is more common in females and immune headquarters produce autoantibodies which are directed against the TSH receptors of the follicular cells. So these autoantibodies which are coming from the immune system, these autoantibodies attack the TSH receptors. When these autoantibodies attack the TSH receptors, not only these autoantibodies bind with the receptor, but they also stimulate the receptor. Let's focus here. What we have to learn that not only antibodies bind with the receptor, but they also stimulate the receptors. And when they stimulate the receptors, it means these autoantibody behave like TSH, right? But the difference in TSH and these autoantibodies is that these autoantibodies are able to stimulate the receptors for more powerfully and for longer duration as compared to TSH, right? Now, normally what happens, all of you know that from the hypothalamus, there is a production of TRH. And this TRH goes to interior pituitary and lead to release of TSH, right? Hypothalamus is producing TRH. And this TRH is going to the interior pituitary through portal system and stimulate that release of TSH. And normally this is a TSH which is supposed to stimulate this receptor, right? Now, as I told you in these patients, because these autoantibodies stimulate the gland very powerfully, these autoantibodies are called thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins. And because not only they stimulate the thyroid cells, but they can lead to the growth of the thyroid cells. So they are also called thyroid growth immunoglobulins. So these thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins and thyroid growth immunoglobulins, which bind with TSH receptors, not only they increase the function of the cell, but they also lead to the growth of the cell and proliferation of the cell, right? So what are the results of this? Result of this is that there is excessive production of T3 and T4 right and this t3 t4 which is going to the circulation right as you know this t3 and t4 will eventually produce its metabolic actions on the peripheral cells right and what will what will really happen that bmr will be basal metabolic rate will be increased in all tissues of course you know that bmr is not increased in gonads and the brain spleen and the lymph nodes but all other tissues bmr is increased Secondly, body has, uh, you can say, more uh, responsiveness to adrenergic drive. You know, beta adrenergic receptors, beta adrenergic receptors are also expressed in excessive number in the tissues under the directions of T3 and T4. With that, right, now, again, let me tell you what, what, what's really happening that immune system is producing R20 bodies. These R20 bodies are stimulating uh, TSH receptors and they are not only binding, they are stimulating and stimulating for stronger than the normal TSH and forcing these cells to produce more T3, T4. Not only forcing these cells to produce more T3 and T4, uh, along with that, these also lead to the growth of the cells. And these cells, with the time, become columnar and they become more in number right so follicles become crowded with the cells and you can say due to excessive engraves disease due to excessive stimulation of uh, tsh receptors cells undergo cuboidal cells become columnar cells and there's uh, extra uh, excessive number of cells per follicle and even total number of follicles also increase and eventually uh, there's diffuse enlargement of thyroid gland thyroid gland enlarges in every portion and this diffuse enlargement of thyroid gland is called diffuse goiter again let me uh, make a very clear concept the goiter means there is a large thyroid but goiter does not tell you if i say this patient has goiter it does not tell you he is hyperthyroid or hypothyroid or euthyroid remember one thing goiter simply means that person has a thyroid which is large but a goiter thyroid gland which is large thyroid gland may be hyper functioning or may be normally functioning or may be hypo functioning so let me tell you here if we talk about goiter goiters some goiters are hyper functioning 
Is that right? Goiters are associated with hyperthyroidism and some goiters are having normal T3-T4 production. We call them goiters associated with euthyroidism and some goiters are associated with low production of T3-T4 and we call them, uh, they are producing hypothyroid situation. What I really want to put in your mind is goiter tells you about the size of the gland. It does not tell you about the function of the gland. It's quite possible one patient has goiter with hyperthyroidism, other patient has goiter with youth thyroid state and still another patient who has goiter with hypothyroid state, right? But when we talk about the Graves disease, right, this is also a goiter but without any nodules. There is diffuse enlargement of goiter right in a diffuse enlargement of the gland because it is diffuse enlargement of the gland it is a goiter but it is diffuse goiter and with that there is thyrotoxic state because this goiter is producing excessive amount of t3 and t4 is that clear now what will happen to this person this person will develop thyrotoxic state person will develop thyrotoxic state thyrotoxicosis Thyrotoxicosis means the clinical features related with the hyperthyroidism and complications of hyperthyroidism. I will go into detail of thyrotoxicosis later. So, number one, these patients, again, let me repeat it immune system overstimulates, autoantibodies overstimulate thyroid tissue. That leads to cells which are cuboidal become columnar, plus there is a Increase number of cells per follicle and total number of follicles is also increased. So total size of the gland is increased, right? Diffuse goiter is there. Along with that, massive amount of T3T4 is produced, and this T3T4 uh, produces the clinical features of thyrotoxicosis. Along with this, this T3T4 produces a negative feedback mechanism, and that will suppress the production of TSH as well as production of TRH. So, in these patients who are having Graves' disease. They are having low TRH and of course low TSH level, circulating TSH levels, right? Now, there are two more important points that this immune headquarter, these antibodies may also attack the extra orbital connective tissue, right? This is your eyeball, right? There are extraocular muscles here and there may be some fat and connective tissue and some unfortunate patient these autoimmune processes not only attack the thyroid tissue but these autoimmune processes also attack the extra extraocular right retro orbital connective tissue so extraocular muscles may be attacked by these antibodies right some people believe that extraocular muscles and connective tissue or retro orbital fat these may have some antigens which are structurally similar with the TSH receptor, due to that reason, those autoantibodies attack here. And those autoantibodies attack over here. This tissue is also get injured and inflamed. And when the tissue becomes injured and inflamed and edematous and swollen, so it means that connective tissue amount in the orbit will increase. And this will push the eyeball forward. So eyeballs will uh, be protruding uh, forward and outward. And this condition is called exophthalmos. This condition is called exophthalmos so what we can say that these patients who are having thyrotoxicosis right number one immune system attack classically on the thyroid tissue and produces diffuse goiter along with that thyrotoxic state by increased secretion of t3t4 of course that suppresses trh and tsh levels in the blood number two this immune system may attack the connective tissue in the orbit and that may lead to inflammation of the connective tissue and excessive production of proteoglycans and edematous status and this inflammation and edema in the orbital connective tissue lead to uh, it squeezes the eyeballs forward and that produces exophthalmos and in some unfortunate patient the same you can say autoimmune processes may attack uh, some skin over the lateral malleolus right and over the lateral malleolus, right, if the skin is having autoimmune attack, that may lead to some thickening of the skin over here and some undue deposition of connective tissue with some uh, water adsorption over this 
and we call it pre-tibial myxedema. Please don't confuse pre-tibial myxedema with the generalized myxedema which is present in hypothyroidism. Again, let me repeat it. This is a confusing term, myxedema. Myx generalized myxedema occurs in a patient who are suffering with hypothyroidism, right? Where all over the body, they, under the skin, there is a heavy deposition of uh, connective tissue and water, water adsorption on that generalized myxedema. But in patient of Graves' disease, sometimes we see that there is pre-tibial myxedema, especially slightly above the lateral malleolus, right? So this was something about the Graves' disease. I have not discussed the features of thyrotoxic causes that I will discuss with the after finishing these causes. Now, already you know about the Graves' disease. That Graves' disease is an autoimmune disease. Let's recap. It's an autoimmune disease. It's more common in the females. Male to female ratio is 9 is, uh, female to male ratio is 9 is to 1. It is more common in the age of 30 to 50. Graves' disease, autoantibodies are classically directed against the TSH receptors on the follicular cells. Follicular cell increase the synthetic and secretory activities, right? Due to that reason, thyrotoxic state occur. Number two, follicular cell may undergo growth pattern and eventually undergo proliferation. That may lead to formation of diffuse goiter. Because this goiter is associated with hyperthyroidism, we can also call it diffuse toxic goiter in Graves' disease, right? Of course, you must know that this T3 and T4 which is produced, that will act on the thalamus and hypoth uh, act on the, sorry, hypothalamus reduce the TRH production and it powerfully act on the anterior pituitary and by negative feedback inhibition this T4 will inhibit the production of TSH. So in Graves disease patient what really happens that T3 level is up, T4 level is up, TSH level is low, TRH level is low and in the blood thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins and thyroid growth immunoglobulins can be detected. Right? 